Hello and welcome to another episode of the I Work in Sports live interview. This is the show where we talk to accomplished sport business professionals who come here to share their knowledge, experience, tips and advice in order to, uh, to, in order to help you succeed in your career. Uh, my name is João Figerio. I'm the founder of I Work, I Work in Sport. Um, if you don't know I Work in Sport, we're a platform made to help you boost your career in sport. We connect talents and recruiters, especially through our series of events, um, while we also promote career growth and education always in sport. Um, if this is your first time here, uh, you, you know the drill. We're looking forward to hearing your comments. Um, if you want to know more about I Work in Sport, go to iworkinsport.com. Um, also, you can find us in our social media uh, channels, YouTube, uh, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, everywhere at I Work in Sport. Uh, by the way, uh, you just saw uh, at the start a short ad for an event that is coming up. This is the um, Education Virtual Expo. So this is an event uh, where you'll be able to uh, meet programs, uh, master's programs, MBAs um, in sport, in sport management. If you are interested in maybe applying for one of those courses, uh, just go there. You'll be able to meet their staff, uh, talk to their alumni, get all the information. It's free to attend. So there is uh, the link in the description below. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you for, for being here with us. If you're coming back, you know the drill. Uh, prepare your questions. Normally, the best questions come from you. Uh, and also, let us know where you're watching from, right? This is normally an international audience. If you can let us know where you are at the moment, write in the comments. That would be great. And of course, if you're watching it on YouTube and want to hit that like button, that would be great appreciated as well. If you're on the show of the content, also, you know, feel free and you're welcome to subscribe. Um, now let me introduce my guest, uh, Jair Bertoni. Well, he's a good, very good friend of mine, but this is not why he's here in the show today. Uh, maybe just a, one reason of many. He is actually an accomplished professional with more than 15 years of experience in sport, primarily football. We first met when we did the FIFA Master back in 2004, 2005. He graduated in 2005. Um, after graduation, he joined the European Leagues. At the very beginning of their activities or as their head of cabinet, after about 10 years there or nearly 10 years, he went on to start his own consultancy. Uh, but soon after that, he was invited to join FIFA as the, their director of member associations for the Americas. So he's had a remarkable career, has a lot to teach. I'm super excited, happy and looking forward uh, to it. So I'm going to get Jair in the show right after this. Jair Bertoni, how are you, hermano querido? Como estás? Boa tarde, meu amigo. Como vai? I hope Very that well. everything is fine there in Lausanne. Send you my greetings from the from the cloudy Zurich. Yeah, here in Lausanne is also, I suppose, um, similar weather. So we invite everyone to to let us know again where they're watching from. Prepare questions, Jair. Um, before we actually start, so let's talk about something that is uh, not controversial at all. Have you watched the, uh, have you seen the Pele documentary on Netflix? So first of all, I will say, I promise that we're not going to quarrel about Argentina and Brazil like we did in the past during the Master. My because... question is going to be, Pele or Maradona? So not to be. <laughs> both, both at their times. I like both. 
I like both. But for me, you know, my biggest idol, one of my biggest idol is uh, Ronaldo, number nine, that used to play in World Cup winner in, 20, in 2002. So Ronaldo and also Zidane. So I, I, I like Diego because he's uh, obviously Argentinian. And, uh, and uh, as you know, I met him personally and, uh, you know, and uh, it was very sad when he passed away. But I think he and Pelé, they are icons of football and legends that, uh, you know, I, I left on the pitch a lot of uh, a lot of learning, a, a different game. They just, you know, elevate the game at the, at, at, at the highest level. So uh, both are um, fantastic players. Great, great, Jair. Wow, you're very political now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jair, uh, before we jump to the questions, Give us a summary of your career. So let's uh, tell a bit about yourself to people who are watching us now and don't know you yet. So to start with that, I need to talk a little bit about my personal as well uh, side. So my, as you know, my, my father um, played in 78, 82. He was professional football player. So football basically was, was part of my life since I was born. Uh, we were moving with my father due to, you know, his, um, um, his transfer to different places, Sevilla, Napoli. So uh, football was always in, in, in the family since the very beginning. And uh, I love football and I'm thank thankful to football uh, for all what uh, football gave to, to, to my family and still is, is giving. So I always wanted to do out of my career, I study marketing and business administration. I was a little bit, you know, bored about uh, working in a retailing company. And I said, I want to do uh, of my, my passion, my, my actual job career. So I decided to basically um, started a study in the FIFA master, the international uh, master for uh, humanities uh, management and, 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 and the legal side of sport. Together with you in 2004, I started before that with a, a small internship experience in Argentina uh, in the company that was managing the, the commercial right of the national team. Um, and so, but I, I had the feeling that Argentina back in at that time was not still, you know, the environment was still not professionally uh, structured in order to give opportunities for people who wanted to work in in sport, right? It was a very small industry. Now it's becoming a little bit more and more professionalized and as in the rest of South America, looking for people really with the expertise in, in sport management. So I, I wanted to grow and I said, okay, the best thing to do is to go and study abroad and learn from the best in Europe, right? So I did the master and um, after one year of the master, I find myself without the job of uh, my dream or any job in sport. And I was fortunate that the master gave me an opportunity to stay six months additionally in Europe, looking for my future, but working for the, for the FIFA master as a local coordinator in Milan, uh, in the management model. So helping the teachers and helping the students. I had to say, I was back then a little bit uh, frustrated, very sad, that I was seeing some of my classmates, you know, getting a job in sport and myself, I was not having this opportunity, but uh, it was a great experience. It was a good time as well to know a lot of people from different sport industries. Um, I met people from basket, NFL. So it was good as well for networking my time work, uh, that I was working for, for the CIS. And then after that, you know what they said, being at the right time with the right skills in the right uh, place. So there was uh, uh, this idea of creating an association of professional football leagues in Europe, which basically they coexist with the federations at the national level. So you have Premier League, but you have the FA, you have the Italian League, but you have as well the Fiji Chi. And there was a need to create this association to represent their interests at European level. So what basically happened is that they were, they were looking for someone to, uh, to assist the general secretaries. And I was lucky enough to, to you know, put forward my CV. Thanks to the, the Italian League, people in the Italian League that they knew me. 
they just just you know put forward my CV. I have an interview. I I got the job you know as an assistant. I didn't care about you know the role, the position. I think I left the the interview without knowing what was the role of the of the new position that I was applying for. Uh, but for me, it was football, very thrill, you know, European leagues, a new world for me. And I was lucky enough to, 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 to apply, to get recruited by the general secretary. Then over time, we grow in staff. And so I, after, you know, nine years working there, basically, I decided that uh, Europe was not anymore the focus for me. I wanted to do something, you know, abroad, something, you know, that uh, it was having an impact for football outside Europe. Europe is pretty much set. As you know, there are, you know, competitions at the highest level, um, professionalism in the industry. I wanted to bring some of my knowledge abroad. And so I just uh, took that limp of faith um, and uh, I just quitted the job. And I decided to focus maybe uh, either in South America or in Central America or give, getting the chance in FIFA. And fortunately, after one year of uh, acting as a consultant for FIFA and professional football, there was this opportunity coming along as a director of uh, members associations for the Americas. And is the way now I'm, uh, I'm positioned after uh, already uh, four years since, since November 2016. So great. here I am now. Great, Jair, great. 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 Uh, it's, uh, it's nice story. I, I remember being sort of with you being part of that at the beginning. You're not really understanding what the job was <laughs> uh, with your European <laughs> League first. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a nice story. You you actually also gave a very uh, beautiful speech at one of the I Work in Sport events at the job fair here in Lausanne, where I think the the topic was was how you you recognize how some people helped you in your career. So that was uh, very nice. You mentioned you know taking a leap of faith now. And I, I think there was a couple of other takeaways there. Uh, you talked about uh, identifying your comp competitive advantage and to adapt to, to the situation. So I'm actually going to, to put the, the, the video there somewhere when people are watching the replay so they can um, watch that as well. That was, um, that was very cool. Now, I remember that uh, working for FIFA was your dream job when we were studying together. Uh, now that you're there, how does that uh, compare to your dream? So, you know, sometimes uh, as, a, as any dream, you just idealize the, the, the position and, um, and, and what you're going to do. Uh, when, my, when my dream job was, at, uh, and this is a, is a good thing that I would like to share with the, with, with the people on the other side, with the audience. When I, when I wanted to work in FIFA, as a South American, you know, football, FIFA is, is the dream to be achieved for any football manager. Uh, so, fo so football is, is, is you know, it's big in, in South America, like in many other parts of the world. So working at FIFA was, uh, you know, the top, uh, um, the top of the top for, for, for a manager uh, like me. So, but I always wanted to work more on the competition side. I always wanted, you know, I have this... Um, this in my mind that I wanted just to be on the pitch that work, you know, work in, in, in organizing a competition, an event. And after, after uh, you know, my career in the EPFL and everything, just I realized that there were so many other ways, you know, to be involved in football and in FIFA. So the dream job was back then in 2004 uh, to work in the competition department. Now I am in the Members Association uh, division. And this is different job is is uh, is to provide services, professionalize the, the, the maze, uh, develop football um, via our financial assistance and expertise. Uh, so I have to say it's different from that uh, dream job, but it's still uh, a dream job because at the end of the day, I just as you said, try to reinvent myself and find my way into this world of uh, the football industry. And um, uh, there is definitely a lot of much more work than I was thinking <laughs> you, this, this role could have, could have been, you know, in my, in my dream job. 
but uh, definitely is a, is not only a privilege to work in FIFA and assist in our members' association to develop football, but it's also a, a big responsibility. So uh, I'm trying to take it in this um, in this way. You know, I think I think the dream job is always you know still to come, in my opinion. So okay. that is just the the uh, the the, 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 the first step of many others that I took and, and allow me to be now at FIFA. Okay, cool. Uh, Jay, before I, I pass to the other one, there's um, many people here saying hi. Uh, so let me give a shout out to Ines Romanelli in London, uh, Yvonne in Lesotho. Uh, this one, you know, she says it's a tricky question. I think she's talking about the question about the Pelé and Maradona. Uh, Sanket uh, in India. Eduardo, I don't know if he's in Argentina. Marcelo here in Neuchâtel. Grande Marcelo. Jaime, Marcelo Grande Ferreira. Jaime. Regina Justo. Uh, there is, uh, hello, Leandro. Inis. Iñaki. Shout out to, thanks for everyone that is here. Otacilio. Juan in Colombia, Grande Nicolas, just talked to him today in, in Zurich. Wow, I'll go very quickly here. Audrey in Belgium, Semit in Switzerland, Natalia in Cologne. Thanks so much for everyone that is uh, here with us today. Uh, oh, Mariana and Huda is in Palestine. I think it's the, the first one that sends a message from, from Palestine to, to us. Welcome to the show. Hello, Enrique in, in Italy, Fernando in, in Brazil. It's a very international crowd here. I'll go to the other names um, in, in a moment because there is uh, so many. Jair, you're attract, attracting a big audience today, so big responsibility. Greetings to Palestine. I was able to be there to, to teach in the CIS uh, network. So... Okay. I was I was really privileged to be to be there teaching to the students. Great, Jair. Uh, many of the people who watch us are people that are starting their career in sport or want to start their career in sport. So explain to us what do you think were the things that allowed you to be uh, where you are to, today. I mean. Maybe skills, maybe opportunities. Or was it was it a bit of luck or how much is it um, what you studied? What's led you to where you are? So, you know, um, I think one of my, as I said in, the, in my speech um, during I work in sport, uh, I think uh, I was trying to leverage on my competitive advantage, both, uh, you know, from, from professional side, but also personal side. Uh, I think, you know, from a personal point of view, I always think, and I always said, this to, to many, many, many um, people that are looking for a job uh, at FIFA or any, anywhere in, in sport, um, that, you know, persistency, I think. You know, there is no way, but no way, and you are also part of this, uh, of this persistency, that you, you actually put, you know, all yourself out there looking for the opportunity, making contacts, and, uh, you know, and and you will you will find your way. There is no no way that if you just you know try, uh, you will you will not achieve what you what you want. If the more you try, I think you will you will get it. I mean, obviously, maybe it's not going to be what you what you thought at the beginning. Uh, you you wanted, but it will be something good and right for uh, for you for sure. And then. I think, you know, no matter what you are doing and where you are doing, if you are doing it right, I think it resounds a lot on, on people. And I, I felt like, you know, my job at the EPFL, even at the beginning when I was, uh, you know, even building furniture for the, for the association, we were trying to build the office, you know, uh, some, someone could have taken it like, ah, but this is not what I enrolled for, you know, it's not my thing. Um, but then, you know, I, I progress. I, I, I have a great team of people working alongside me as well. But I think, you know, I perceive that 
whatever you do, if you do it with your with your uh, with your heart and you do it, you know, to excel, people outside your organization will actually look at you, and uh, you know, will see that you are a potential um, a person that potentially can can do good for their own companies or or associations. So don't discourage if you are nowadays occupying a coordinator job or you are just an intern, try to do your best because people notice. At the end of the day, good people notice you. And when they need, you know, some help, they will probably give you a chance. So I, I always try to do all what I can and the best, the best I can in any position that I, I, I were occupying, because I knew that this will, will give me, you know, at the end of the day, good, uh, good results. Yeah, great. Um, it, that's uh, what they call leading by example. You have to, you know, do things. That is more when you occupy a position of, uh, you know, with a team. I think uh, it's more that, it's more leading by example in order to, to convince your team that, uh, you know, this is the way. You cannot uh, request things without actually showing that you are willing to, to do it first. Exactly, exactly. And Jair, um, let's talk a, a bit more about your current job. So what is it that uh, you do as director of member associations? What's your job like? Explain that to us. I think that will be for three hours only. <laughs> no, quickly, quickly. There's, there are many questions here and soon I'm sure that's everybody or many people who start asking you questions as well. So quickly. <laughs> so no. Uh, so basically, just to summarize, uh, I'm responsible to uh, service and uh, provide, you know, a, a bridge between FIFA and uh, and the members associations that are in the Americas. Uh, all, all of them from Canada to Chile. Well, I started initially with, with 23 MAs from Canada to Argentina of the continental area and three Spanish-speaking MAs in the Caribbean. But just recently, I got the trust of my of the organization and, and, and my boss, and I took over as well all the Caribbean regions. So I have 45 now, all the Americas, as, as, we, as we know it. And uh, basically, my, my main purpose is to implement the... The, the forward program, which is the, the, the program of development, uh, which is uh, financial assistance, but also project development base of FIFA in order to develop football in the region. But as well, many, many other things related with governance in the federation. So with the assistance of the governance department, financial governance as well, to have a proper and transparent management of the funding that we are providing. And I have the pleasure to lead an amazing team of people. So I have um, three members of the team here in, in, uh, in, Su in Zurich, a regional manager, but I also manage uh, three regional offices. I don't know if uh, many people know that FIFA has regional offices around the world. One is in Panama, one is in Asuncion, and one is in Barbados. So I have the pleasure to also um, work uh, alongside the colleagues uh, over there. And we assist the May in any things that are related with, with FIFA matters uh, all the time to try to create a bridge between FIFA and, and the May. And our main purpose is basically to professionalize, you know, the, the, the way that the Mays are working in, in football to, to help them to reach their, their main objectives. Cool. You mentioned the FIFA forward. Explain just a little bit more so what that is if someone that is watching us don't know the assistance program that you have. So F FIFA Forward is the basically flagship uh, development program uh, that the President Infantino uh, created and started to implement in 2016, in June. Um, so basically it's uh, partly an assistance uh, from a financial point of view to MAs to invest on the daily operations as well as uh, in you know basic development activities as courses, competitions, uh, uh, national teams, uh, and as well um, infrastructure. So we have as well uh, a project-based uh, funding that the maze needs to size uh, is around two million in a cycle of four years, 
and they need to invest in in, in development programs, in development projects, uh, you know, new infrastructure, renovation of stadia, technical center. So we give uh, FIFA gives in total around six million dollars uh, in a, in a span of four years. Uh, as I said, it's partly divided in assistant early assistance for operational uh, purposes and partly, uh, as I said, in, in, in specific projects, like, like a new com the launch of a new competition. So we help the maze to build those projects as well with you know, our expertise. We identify what are the main objective of the Federation to try with our program to, to reach them, right? Okay. Jay, you mentioned that you have three um, employees um, working under you in Zurich, and then how many others in the um, in the rest with the other three regional offices? So there are three in each regional office, so in total nine uh, with the three offices. There is a development manager in each office and two uh, two project coordinators. And the project coordinators are basically divided in, you know, uh, each in, in, in a certain set of members association to focus more the service. And their main, their main purpose there is uh, the implementation of the forward program. Cool. And what are the main things you take into account when you're hiring someone? Or to hire someone. Yeah. So I think the, the, the you know the CV is uh, it's good to have an overview. Uh, if the people have the at least the, the right experience in the in the sport industry, um, but also the skills that you actually need. I have I have some of the members of the staff in the regional offices that they don't have a, a sporting background before they start to work in in the regional office. But for instance, one of them. Uh, a very skillful uh, member of the staff in Panama was coming from United Nations uh, development. So he has this development and he brought a lot of, you know, project management tools and, uh, and knowledge to the team. So it depends, you know, uh, I, I look for the uh, right experience for the, for, the, for the job. And also one thing that I, obviously the languages, because being a FIFA, Members' associations, when you address them in their native language, um, is much easier, you know, to work. Uh, but also, as well, I think references. Um, I think it's important for me to double check, you know, people that knows, um, uh, you know, potential candidates, and they can just people that I trust that they have a good judgment, and they can tell me this person is right, is working hard, you know, a little bit more about him on the or her on the field. And why is because in the interview, we all tend to, you know, uh, excel ourselves or, you know, inflate a bit how we are and what we are able to do. But, you know, uh, the players are being looked at the field and this you don't actually see it until the person is starting. So having good references and, and discuss uh, people that may know these candidates uh, is always important for me. And I think... Yeah. The feeling, you know, the what you feel, and you know, the it's difficult to say in one interview. But I think uh, you can have a feeling at the beginning if the person is the the right person. Above all, Joao, I will say that uh, I want people in my team that are good human beings. I think that is essential. That are you know uh, willing to do, proactive, always available, team team workers. Because, you know, the, 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 the details of the job, the technical details, you always, if you have, you know, good people willing to, to do their best, they can always learn. Great. Thank, thank you, Jair. So just, um, yeah, there's an echo there. Uh, a shout out to Fernando Bedoni, Zaire Khan, Kenneth Larson, uh, she's in Sweden, Hassan Arkadas in Berlin, Franco, Will in Bucharest, Javier Medrano in Guatemala, Kirsty Dukhart here in Lausanne. They're all watching us on uh, LinkedIn. And then there is also Rafael Arias um, on, on, on YouTube, Aldo Viedo, Grande Diego Compaire, amigo. Diego, uh, querido. Uh, in Amsterdam, I suppose, Christoph Trundle uh, here in Lausanne. And there's a message saying that El Grande, Daniel Bertoni is 
saying, sending saludos from Buenos Aires. What a special guy. <laughs> was a, was a plan to play a few matches with him at the Great Escape Football Club. <laughs> maybe, maybe I know him. Maybe you know him. Great. Jair, and so for, for someone that is actually applying for a job at FIFA now, so they just sending their CV or preparing their CV, do you have any, any advice, any tip to give? Well, as you know, COVID time is a difficult time, right? So there is no much, uh, much movement in terms of staffing at the moment in, in FIFA. But uh, the good news is that uh, there will be. Once the COVID pass, I think there is a lot of good projects in FIFA and, uh, and we need good, good people. Um, what I would say is like, uh, yes, uh, to try to find an entry level, um, I, I think uh, is the best uh, to recognize you, your experience and to try to find an, an, an entry level. Um, if you like, as I said, if you like maybe one area, don't, uh, don't disregard your, your current experience and, and skills to enter into another area. I think it's all, all, you, you, will, you may be surprised that there are good, uh, good projects and roles, maybe in other areas that you, you didn't think about uh, when, when applying for FIFA. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, a minimum experience, maybe in a federation, in a club, uh, um, I, I think is, uh, is positive, even in, a, in, a, in another sport as well. You know, the world of federations uh, is, always, is always positive. Um, and uh, I think um, languages is as well uh, an important uh, asset. You know, uh, as I said, we have 211 uh, members associations. We, we much appreciate people that, uh, uh, that have language skills that can enable us to communicate in the native language of the, of the federations for, for, for everything, for competitions, when you organize the competitions, but also when, when, when you work in the main division in, in forward projects. So, and also I think it's, it's, it's good, you know, to, to enter into FIFA, but sometimes uh, you, you need to do it, you know, not in a direct way, maybe it's in a direct way if you work in a competition from, for FIFA, you know, uh, like one of the competitions that FIFA is organizing um, under 20, under 17, the World Cup as well. Um, and then you will find a way, you know, for people to, to, to know you, to, to meet with people from FIFA. And obviously, as I said, once always rely in, in someone that knows that can deliver the job at the end of the day. So the more in contact you have uh, with FIFA and the more opportunities you have to work with FIFA, even if you are working in a, in a, in a local organizing committee, member association clubs, I think you, you will find the best easier the way to, to then apply for a job and, and get in the, the, the job. Cool, Jair. Thanks for that. You mentioned that uh, there aren't many positions now, but there will be uh, soon, hopefully. So maybe it's a good plug for me to, to tell people that um, FIFA is confirmed at the upcoming uh, I Work in Sport virtual job fair. So it will take place online in May, on the 21st of May. So stay tuned for that. We're going to open registration soon. Uh, Jair, and what would you say is the importance of formal education for someone that is, uh, wants to start a career in sports? Because there are many ways you can learn things uh, nowadays, but there are programs. You did uh, a master's in sport. I don't know if, if it changed much since when you did it. Uh, some more than 15 years ago to, to now. So what do you think is the, the true importance of formal education? I would say very important because it's obviously, you know, when you, when you look for a, for a job, for instance, and you have other 300 candidates for the job, like it happens for one position in FIFA, then obviously that it will be an asset. A person will look at your CV say, and seeing that you have a, a particular special um, let's say expertise because you did a, a master in, in sport management or sport marketing and, and therefore you, you will be uh, taken out from the pack you know then there are other things as well to be considered but, but this is one, one important point from the, from the job searching side 
from the knowledge point of view, I grew a lot, I think, you know, coming from Argentina when I did the, 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 the master. And I learned so many things that they were not in my radar. Things about legal or things about the history of sport, which also helped me a lot. Even in small things, you know, when you have a conversation with, uh, with one of your members uh, and some of, some of them, maybe they are uh, cricket lovers. You know, the fact that you, I, we study history of cricket in, in the, in, 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 in the model in Leicester, in Leicester yeah. is, is giving you a hint, you know, just to, to start a conversation, to speak, you know, is part also of your, of, of, of your cultural awareness. Um, so small, big things, I think, uh, is, uh, is good as well to, to have this knowledge of sport. And then obviously in your daily, in your daily job, uh, I mean, if I if if I work in FIFA, I need to know the structure of FIFA. It's giving you a leverage when you start, you know, and uh, and and a complete understanding of of the of the football industry and how FIFA operates and work. So I think is you know what we say in Argentina. My mother was always saying to me, the knowledge is not occupying any space in your head, so profit it. So it's good that if you have the possibility to to do a, a master of a course. Good stuff. Thank you, Jair. Uh, by the way, Eduardo says that Gladys uh, says hi from Buenos Aires. So <laughs> here, Mario Vargas um, has a question. I think you touched on some of that already, but uh, if you'd like to add something to that, he says, what's your advice for people who want to start their career in sports, on whatever the field is? such as management or marketing or human rights to sports, but they don't know how or don't have anyone to help them uh, to get in the business? Well, I was in the same situation as Mario and uh, you as well, Joao, when before the master. I think the master is as well as um, or any course is opening you an opportunity as well of networking, obviously, and, and, and start to be somehow part of the of the industry. Maybe from a more academic point of view, but still, you you start to do your your entry level into the the sporting industry. So I think you know if you don't know anyone and and you believe in your skills, you believe on your potential, you know having a having this opportunity to do a, a master or a course in in in, uh, in sport uh, management, sport law, sport marketing is obviously. Uh, getting you related with uh, a lot of people in the sport industry and then start to show yourself and and, and do the right networking and, and contacts. I want just as well to touch upon something that Mario mentioned there, human rights. Actually, I would say it's an area of uh, great opportunities nowadays in, in the sport industry. Human rights was basically left aside in the, in the sport industry and I'm talking about the football industry for, for you know, many, many, many years. And now is a, is a very important topic on the agenda of, uh, of sport entities, particularly uh, associations, international federations. So I think there are a lot of opportunities there. We have, for instance, in FIFA already like a department dealing with human rights, safeguarding of, uh, and protection of, uh, uh, of children uh, participating in sport. You know, many of the nasty stories happening, you know, in sport during the last years uncovering you know um, yeah, networking and uh, you know illicit activities of pedophilia so more and more there is you know uh, a need for people with that specific uh, knowledge to work in 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 the world of, of sports so i would say that uh, that is a good uh, a, a good area to explore for the future great thank you Jay. before i pass to the other question a sunket um Cool Carney asks here, being an electronic engineer, what technical roles can I apply at FIFA? I will actually, I, I think I can answer that. Sunket, all, all positions there are online. They, they post online. So if you go to FIFA.com, you will be able to see if there are technical positions at, um, at the moment. Um, Jair, what are the biggest challenges for football in the, the near future? Or well, what are the most challenging? Let's talk about foot, football in general, and then I want to know about the most challenging aspects of your work. I mean, it, uh, the things that you deal with. Yeah, well, in, in the short term, obviously, the issue of COVID and trying to get a uh, get out. Of the, 
of the pandemic is one one important uh, issue. You know, there are a lot of clubs and and federation particularly struggling nowadays in terms of uh, of revenues, which impact obviously the core the core business and the, the investment on on football. So besides that, I would say I always try to pose this question to many of my my colleagues at the federation, president, general secretaries, because are the top decision makers. But you know, I see as well the new generations, um, you know, much more into um, technology. You know, they cannot get the attention uh, into one things more than five minutes. Um, they have a lot of other. Um, you know, spare spare activities uh, besides sports, besides football, besides watching a match that are being offered to them, being gaming or or others uh, that are taking a lot of their time. So I always say to them, how we will catch the attention of this new generation for 90 minutes, either to watch football or to be to be part of a uh, of, of a match as a spectator. You know, I had the feeling, and I have a, 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 a nephew of six years old, he cannot get the attention, you know, for in one thing for more than five minutes. So I think we need a lot to, a lot to do in terms of catch, catching their attention. We cannot lose the wave of new technologies and opportunities. The, the world is now digitalized. We need to do more on that, create, you know, chances to engage them. So this is, is one point. And the other point as well is to have more, more football players and uh, both men and women for the future. We need to invest a lot on the on the game to still, you know, have a lot of uh, people playing football. Because at the end of the day, what is making this game interesting is the talent that we have on the pitch. If we don't have that uh, that uh, that talent, uh, you know, uh, football will perish. So. I think uh, there is a lot, a lot of reflection on how to to do more on on development, you know, uh, at international and at domestic level. And uh, I will say that uh, we all need to work together in in in, in this uh, in this respect. And um, and did COVID nineteen? That uh, of course you mentioned that uh, during your answer. Did that did that affect uh, all the member associations pretty much the same way? Or for some, uh, some of them were hit much uh, harder than than others. For some, was much worse than than others. How how was that across, let's say, the Americas? Yeah. So basically, you know, these um, these uh, countries that they have professional football, uh, and they obviously leave uh, the clubs by the the revenues, uh, and also they invest a lot on 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 development and national teams. Those federations and clubs they were uh, ha they were harsh, like uh, uh, strongly heated by the COVID because the revenues are not uh, there anymore. Sometimes you know the TV is not the main source of income, but the the ticketing is in some parts of Central America, for instance. So ticketing is not there anymore. Uh, so they were the the ones suffering the most. Some others, the big ones, they needed to shut down programs of development because there were no possibilities to do, but also financially, some of the sponsors, you know, maybe cut payments, delay payments, or or basically they just terminated the contract and they didn't renew it. So, yes, those ones are the ones that suffer the most. The small ones, they have some more survival problems. There are many coaches, players and referees that, you know, they, they need the, the per diem that they receive from a match in order to buy food. Uh, so we have very different, uh, different, different, different situation and scale of the problem. But, you know, they need also that money to survive. So for them, football was a way to, you know, to buy food, uh, to pay the rent. Um, so obviously there as well, we needed to, to focus on, on help them. Good, good. So let, let me tell everyone, we're almost, I mean, going to, to the end of, of, of the show. So if you have your questions prepared, this is the time to start asking them, not only about uh, career, but uh, anything related to football development uh, as well. Jair uh, will be happy to answer your question. Jair, I do have one about uh, football development, and I'm interested uh, to know 
how has now technology helped FIFA to develop the game across the globe? So uh, in, in the past um, few years, we've seen so many apps and a lot of technology being implemented in football. How does that actually help as well the development, uh, let's say, at grassroots level? So, for instance, you know, the refereeing part has already been discussed several times about the VAR and, you know, how we can enhance the performance of referees. Uh, from uh, off the pitch, I will say the technology helped a lot of MA to be more communicated and uh, also to be visible. Um, streamline, for instance, give the opportunity to, to many competitions and MAs that didn't have the chance to, you know, to show their games in the past. Now they have the opportunity with this democratization of um, of uh, you know the, the 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 internet to show their games as well to have this opportunity we, we had pedro here at the at the show and diego was uh watching us as well they're very much responsible for for that yeah, yeah exactly that is a good point with uh, with my cujo the the issue is that it's not easy although you know they can show still and have more visibility to to uh to generate revenues, because at the end of the day, there are some external factors that are limiting the country. And I jump into as well the the, um, the development side. You know, there are islands with no more than maybe 3,000 inhabitants or 20,000 inhabitants. So they can focus on grassroots. They can fo focus on, you know, on bringing football to the, to the island, to the country, to try, you know, to have uh, national teams and play at international level as a proud, you know, an identification with the country. Um, the challenges are that, um, you know, some of the federation, they need a lot of support, mainly, I will say, in the management side, uh, more than in the technical side. You know that there are a lot of good football players uh, in the Americas. Uh, many countries, you know, they have legends of football playing also in Europe. But I think the, 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 the development of that talent was not joined by the development of the professionalism to sustain that talent off the pitch. So I think the structures of the maze and the clubs, they didn't follow the pace, you know, of professionalization um, with proper expertise, staffing, um, processes, programs, plans, in order to, to, to uh, su support that uh, that talent and that uh, coaching uh, talent as well. So I think we need we need more to do a lot a, a lot to do outside, you know, the the the, the field of play. So off the pitch uh, to professionalize the structure to invest as well on 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 people. When we arrive uh, in 2016 uh, at FIFA, I think only out of the 23 in the Americas. I have only tw uh, like three or four that they have a strategic plan in the long term. The majority of them, they didn't have a strategic vision, what they wanted to do in, ten, in five or ten years in football. So I think we need to focus more and more into, uh, into that uh, to, to enable the maze to understand where are the areas of opportunities and investment in, in, in programs in, in, in football, right? And obviously... Women's football being one of them as one of the, the areas that we need to, to work more. Cool. Um, thank you, Jair. Uh, Jair, you've been so working in football for many years now and so been involved in many <coughs> football events. I'd like to know what was your favorite sporting moment uh, working? Working, well... Uh, there are actually two. One, uh, I'm also had the I also had the possibility when I was uh, more in the side of uh, working in Europe uh, to be venue director for for UEFA. So venue director is what in many countries they call match commissioner, but with a more sporting sporting focus, right? Uh, to take care of the teams, the pitch, uh, the sporting side of the of the event. So one of my favorite moment was to be there on the sideline. After a lot of work, a lot of uh, learning from uh, from the colleagues of UEFA, and uh, being able to to have my first match in Belenense, a Portuguese club, a small Portuguese club in the Europa League, and be on the side of the pitch, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, working as a venue director in the changing room, organizing the 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 match uh, together with other colleagues of UEFA. So that was one of my favorite moments. I think you know to be there. It was going back to my my dream job of being close to the pitch. You know, working mm -hmm. in an event. And the other one was um, to be part of the there of the of the World Cup in 2018 as a FIFA staff and uh, being part of the Congress and witness as well the final as as part of uh, uh, of, of FIFA. Um, and uh, and I think I will add an, a third one is was when I was about one week to go back to Argentina uh, in my despair of not finding a job and having received the, the, the phone call of my my former general secretaries at the EPFL and uh, listening on the other side of the phone that uh, I was getting the job at the EPFL. I think that, that was a tremendous happiness, you know, uh, being one week to, to quit and, and go back to Argentina and leave my my dream of working in Europe uh, aside. And, and not related to, to work, so your favorite sporting moment? Not related to work? Yeah. If I, want to if, I, if I want to damage you, I would have said, but now is the situation changed. But when we beat uh, Santos in, uh, you know, in the final of the Copa Libertadores, uh, as a I'm final. Happy you, I'm happy we didn't know each other then. <laughs> but then you know Santos now won against Boca in the semi in the last semi final of Copa Libertadores. No, but um, um, I will say that um, yes, you know, related with uh, as my part of fun, you know, my favorite moment was when Boca beat it in, in I think it was quarter final of Copa Libertadores, River Plate. Uh, so Boca lost one zero in River, and then they won three one with goal of Palermo. The former striker, you remember, he was coming with from an injury, and uh, and I remember, I think I screamed the goal and I ran, uh, you know, in the in my in my garden, you know, I was that I was I think 19 years old, 20 years old, I was I was crazy yeah. about that that much. I, I think I think I have to say that mine was probably that time that the Brazil beat Argentina four one. <laughs> That we were in last was together. not mine because I remember we bet, and I yeah, have to exactly. go to the and office. Then you have to spend the whole day wearing a Brazil top the next day. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I should have had that picture. I have one, so that means that you know, you know, the, the, my colleagues from Brazil, uh, the CBF, the, the federation there, they say that they don't know a more Brazilian Argentinian than me. Me neither. I agree <laughs> with them. Starting with my name, right? It's starting with your name, exactly. Starting with your name. There's a question here from Alexandre, who works here with us. So, first of all, love the Argentina, the the Argentina picture behind the World Cup '78. So, there are always doubts about uh, being not being an European and working at FIFA or, or, or in Europe. But let's talk about FIFA. How do you see these opportunities for non-Europeans at FIFA? I think the opportunities are good and, uh, you know, as I said, FIFA needs people that understand the local context, the regional context is so important, especially in the area that I, I work, but also I would say other areas, like when you organize a competition, you know, outside Europe, uh, like in, in, in India, Indonesia, like it will be the, the future one, um, or Costa Rica, so you definitely need people that knows, you know, the, the, the environment, the local culture, the football context. So it's very important to have people from all over the world at FIFA. Actually, I think we have around, uh, if I don't make any mistake, around like 74 something different nationalities at FIFA. Um, obviously, there are some some uh, local local regulations uh, to be respected in uh, in Zurich, but maybe the opportunities are at FIFA but not in Zurich. Maybe the opportunities will come, you know, in uh, in the regional offices or so in the future. Uh, and, and, who knows? And, and, and now, of course, um, so FIFA from, well, Qatar is a mixed thing, but um, after Qatar for the World Cup in the Americas, Mexico, US and Canada also will be very much um, responsible for that, right? Yes, uh, I will be involved from my side of the main division and uh, Obviously, there is also an, an important project that we put, the, we implement after the World Cup. Actually, I'm working in, in, on that and is 
is a great project of a legacy of the World Cup in Brazil 2014. We are implementing a, a, you know, a program with a lot of investment on, on football infrastructure, women's football, youth football, around 100 million US dollars to be invested. The same in Russia, the same will be in Qatar, the same will be in every time that, you know, we, we organize a World Cup, we also work on, on what is left, the legacy for, for that region or that specific country. So I think uh, from my side, I will be involved in that, uh, in that area as well and, and working alongside my, my colleagues in FIFA to ensure a, a successful uh, World Cup. And I believe that there are a lot of opportunities for people from the Americas. Uh, there is a good chance, you know, uh, Mexico, Canada and United States. In United States and, and Canada still to grow and boost the, the football there in those countries. So many opportunities over there. Cool, Jair. Thank you. Thank you. Jair, we're, we're, we're getting close to the hour mark. So, uh, just a, a couple more questions. There's an echo there again. The more it comes and goes. Anyway, uh, what's your biggest, very quickly, your biggest achievement in your career? What's the highlights for you? And maybe also if you have a favorite failure, something that uh, didn't really work, but uh, you had a very good lesson uh, from it that you could carry. So biggest achievement I still is to come. I think, uh, you know... But uh, Tom Brady says. Yeah, he says? Okay. He said that his favorite ring is the next one. That's what he said late. Okay. Uh, I'm successful recently. as him in, in, in what I do, then <laughs> I will be extremely happy. No, but uh, definitely still to come. But I will say that, yeah, there will be several landmarks, you know, um, uh, for instance, working as a consultant as FIFA, establishing the club licensing in South America together with Comebol uh, is a great achievement for club football there. Um, you know, the, the different projects that we are doing, you know, the, regardless the size of the country, uh, all the projects that are being completed and done in a proper manner to be able for the Federation to start strategically and have a, a strategic plan for the future having worked alongside them hand in hand to, to achieve that. Um, you know, to be able to work uh, at the EPFL for a South American, I'm half Italian as well, but uh, my roots and my, my you know, my, I, grow, I grew in South America. But uh, I will say that to be able to be in that board of directors with president of, uh, of uh, leagues, of, you know, Premier League, Spanish League and, and be part of the discussion for me it was so uh, you know impossible when I was I was I didn't see myself back when I was in Argentina, so I think um, that were very key moment in my in my in my career. But also to to know people, I think at the end I have the pleasure to know so many good people that work with me or we have a cooperation with. And I think uh, after all, uh, what, uh, you know, someone leave behind is a good relationship and uh, a good friendship. And this for me is uh, very important. So I try to keep, you know, still a relationship with my former colleagues or, or you know, my people that I met uh, along the way. Good, Jay. Uh, and the bigger failure. You wanted to know the bigger failure. <laughs> I do. Um, I think the... Um, well, biggest failures, I will not say... If, uh, no, not biggest, uh, just favorite. Yeah, I think the favorite failure, actually, that helped me a lot was... I'm not sure many people knows about this. You know, when I was in the FIFA Master, I had three interviews. And the three I was rejected. But the one that hurt me the most was the one at FIFA. And uh, I, have a, I have the possibility to work as a... Well, to, to have a, a, an interview for, as a coordinator in 2005 at FIFA, in the competition department. I actually know the people that, are, that rejected me. There are still some of them working at FIFA, and I told them that they actually didn't, didn't take, uh, you know, take me. I had the interview. I was so sure that I was right for the, for the job, and uh, you know, I was not receiving the call back for one month. I said, something happened. 
And you know, I I, I came back to, to Switzerland with my, my Swiss mobile phone, and I realized that the phone call was in my in my box, right? In my message box. And when I hear after one month, was the director of competition telling me that unfortunately I was not right or fit, I was overqualified, he said, for the job. And it was a, a destroying moment in 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 my in my professional career i was so sad and being a little bit alone in in in, in switzerland you know at that time um yes it was a harsh moment it was a failure for me i considered it as a failure but actually it was my favorite failure fa fa failure because i knew i was still not prepared now i know i was still not prepared you know to to get into fifa that's why i said you need to persist yeah um <laughs> Well, the, the world turns around, huh? Yeah, 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 definitely. Maybe if you got that job the, there, you'd still not at the position that, um, that, that you are uh, today. So Sanket Kulkarni says, Today I felt like two best sports friends sharing their sporting memories. Sorry, um, uh, Sanket, it was exactly that. But I think that uh, Jair uh, also shared a lot of um, great content, uh, great advice. Actually, Franco asks him uh, if you replied already, but uh, what would be your advice for those who do not have any experience in the football industry? He did talk about that, Franco, so I'll suggest that you watch the replay if you missed um, that part, because we're getting to, um, to the end. And before we go, Jair, do you have any book or podcast or YouTube channel that you would like to recommend? Of course, the, I work in sport. <laughs> Thank you. Well, apart from my work in sport, you're a good friend. Yes. Um, you mean book? Uh, I'm reading one that is very interesting for the future of football as well and how things are shaped, which is the, the, the rich club, the rich club, um, which is basically, uh, it's a little bit of a criticism, I think, in certain part of the book, but it's very good, which is basically how the, you know, the, the new influx of investment from, uh, it's called the Billionaires Club. Actually, I have my assistant as well here. and <laughs> <laughs> So the Billionaires Club is a very good book because it's showing you a little bit the evolution of football and how the influx of investment, you know, from from uh, countries like Qatar or, or uh, Emirates or, or Russia are investing in football and what does it mean for the future of football going from you know the very roots of community football to you know a more you know high standard professionalized and the billionaire uh, industry so i will i would highly recommend uh, recommend that and uh, and obviously any 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 youtube channel that you can follow and that you have the possibility to listen expert on the on the sport industry is always very welcome for, for me to learn. Unfortunately, you know, one thing that will happen is that the more that uh, you occupy, you know, positions uh, at the top of a, an organization, the less time you have to learn. And I really miss that part. So every time that I have an opportunity to listen to someone, I, I size it because I would like to go back a little bit of uh, in the learning process. But uh, unfortunately, the time is not uh, is not enough nowadays. Okay, thank you so much, um, Jair. Uh, here, uh, Christoph says again, uh, thank you to Jay and Jay. <laughs> uh, Jaime as well, thanks for being with us and, and everybody else that's, uh, that uh, was here. Uh, it was great. Jair, thanks a lot for, for doing this, coming and sharing your story with um, you know our friends that follow I Work in Sports. Uh, you're a reference, my friend. So it's um, really happy to have you uh, as a friend. And I want to say a big thank you to everyone that is still here. Um, if you are, if you could, if you're still here and you haven't done so, if you can hit that uh, like button, that would be great. Otherwise, also let me just remind you of the I Work in Sport Education Virtual Expo. Really suggest that you check it out. Um, it's a free to, to register. The, the, regi the, the link is in the description. So I think this is it for me. It was uh, wonderful to, to be here with you. Jair, send my regards to Mariana uh, and, and, and the whole family. 
and I hope to, to see you soon. Thank you for inviting me and uh, for me always a pleasure to try to bring my experience and help other people that always remind me remind me back then when I was in their same shoes and uh, you know it's always good to hear some uh, some stories uh, around that uh, can help you and motivate you to to still pursue and trying to reach your your dream job. Great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye everyone. Thanks for for being